r slash credit. What was something you noticed between the groom and bride on their wedding day that made you think they shouldn't be getting married? <laughs> Complete disinterest from the groom about anything to do with the wedding. He wanted zero to do with the planning and would get grouchy if he was even asked for an opinion. Def, he asked to be told what he needed to do and when as he planned on spending the rest of the time drinking in the alley with his buddies. He did exactly that, what was required, with the least possible enthusiasm, and became more and more obviously drunk. The rest of the wedding was awesome. Food, music, open bar. He was the only turd in an otherwise awesome punch bowl. Maybe too awesome, as I woke up on the couch in the bridal suite and the first thought I had was why am I wearing pants? The last I remembered, I was still in my bridesmaid dress. Fast forward till 3 days before their 1 year anniversary, she comes home from work and he's moved out. Before the wedding, they'd been together for 7 years and owned a home together. Turns out, he'd been cheating for last few years and continued after the wedding. But he doesn't get all the blame, she had very much drank the Kool-Aid of supposed to. Supposed to go to college. Supposed to buy a house. Supposed to be married by X age. Supposed to have kids after a year. It's not coincidence that she was engaged on her 29th birthday and married a week before her 30th. After the divorce, she ended up selling the house, buying one of her own, and is incredibly successful in her field. He's a fat, balding barfly who decided to cash out his retirement and quit his job at 33 to spend a year getting DUIs. Edit. Forgot about another wedding I was at years ago. In both of their vows, they said semi-promise. As in I semi-promise to love, honor, etc. <laughs> Sister's second marriage. The problem my scene wasn't necessarily the groom, but his entire family. They were control freaks. Everything had to be dad's way. Nothing felt normal about his family. I was the sound slash DJ for the wedding. Grandma commandeered my audio equipment because the music the bride and groom chose was not music, so we ended up listening to 3 hours of nothing but Elvis. Not that I have a problem with Elvis, but that wasn't the choice of the wedded couple. Fast forward 3 years. Grandma wanted sole custody of the children, and dad told groom that it was to be. Sister got a little angry at the notion and said that they were now independent and if groom listened to dad anymore they would be divorced. Dad was one of those ex-military I tell you to jump you ask how high. Or else. Groom was a dadder's boy and followed everything he said to a T. Dad bragged how he could get away with severely illegal things because he knew what strings to pull. Death threats were made against sister and my entire family. Divorce was swift and sweet. I seemed to be the only family member that their family forgot about, so I was the one holding all copies of any evidence that if anything happened I was to give it to the police. From the beginning she wasn't really involved or excited about the wedding plans. She just didn't care point the groom planned most of the wedding which was at a mountain resort across the country, her home state. It wasn't an easy wedding to get to. His friends and family had a long flight and then drove 3 hours to get there. They were doing pictures before the ceremony and the bride disappeared into the woods. No one could find her for about a hour. People started to panic. The groom was thinking he'd have to call it off. He was planning a speech. Finally, the wife of the best man tracks her down. Bride is crying and we all assumed it was cold feet. The wife of best man said, don't marry him, if you're not sure, who cares what people think. It's not fair to him. But the bride shook her off. After all everyone made such an effort to be there she didn't want to disappoint people. So they went through with it. Most everyone close to the groom, including the groom, knew they should not have married. But it was like being on a train at full speed and not being able to get off. They pretended to be happy for about 6 months with him doing most of the pretending. Got divorced. He had the wedding annulled. This mattered to his parents. And then she came out. She's a lesbian. In the end he met a super cute gal. They got married. She planned it down to the last detail. And now they have a couple of kids. I was a hall directorate at uni and had two student staff who we are obviously super smitten and interested in one another. Spent all their free time together etc. 
the kicker, the girl was engaged to a guy she had dated since she was a freshman in high schools who had attended the same uni but graduated two years earlier. He was a nice but pathetically needy dude. Almost a picture of Jason Segel in Undeclared. If you have not watched it you need to, except uglier. Anyway it was starting to become obvious these two were super infatuated with one another. Everyone was convinced they had not done anything, and I suspect they had not. I had a better relationship with the girl than her direct supervisor, and called her into my office, and confronted her about it. No one had done so, not even her closest friends. In talking it through she knew she did not want to go through with the wedding, two months away at this point, but was super afraid of disappointing everyone, and worried about deposits etc. I asked her point blank, if none of that was the case which dude would she be with, and she named the one it was obvious to all she was in love with. I coached her that while their families might not be stoked about the news or the lost expenses it would be cheaper than being married a year and calling it, or worse, having kids and realizing it was a mistake. Lots of tears we are cried in my office. The next couple of weeks were rough, but she was able to get through it. She lost a lot of friends who, it seems landed on blaming her for cheating, which had to suck. She and her true love are still married today, 8 years later, and I count this one of my greatest moments, breaking up a marriage. I was the bride. Left at the altar. Small wedding in a beautiful local museum. All was fine, until I walked down the aisle, to see he was not there. Not too panicked yet, he's not great with crowds. So we had discussed the probability of me being there before him, if he needed a breather to calm down. Ended up he'd decided nope, couldn't go through a second marriage and bolted. His mom wanted to tell people that there would be no wedding, but I gritted my teeth and said no, I'd do it, I owed people that much. So while sounding like Yoda from swallowing sobs, I had to tell everyone that, although there would be no wedding, there should still be a celebration at least for the friendships that had grown over the years between the two families. Dinner and, a lot, of drinks were had. I did have lovely dances with his dad and mom and even one with his ex-wife, very amicable divorce, stayed friends, she and I got on very well. Called and texted him throughout the evening and night to no avail. The worst part, aside from the love of my life disappearing, taking his two young daughters, 10, 13, aside and trying to explain to them that the wedding wasn't happening, all the while they are sobbing, and I'm trying not to start crying myself. The younger in particular, kept saying she hated her dad, and asked why he was being a jerk. Did everything I could to assure them he is not a bad guy, that he loves them, and is a decent person, despite what happened. They ended up staying in the honeymoon suite with me, and we ate cake, and watched Mean Girls. These beautiful sweet girls, who I'd raised with him, since the youngest was 3. 4 years on. Still not over him. No desire to date or see anyone else. Great relationship with the girls, though their relationship with him has been sadly strained since that day. <laughs> Went to a wedding where the groom's best man, brother, got so a drunk before the toast. Gets up there and goes on for 15 minutes about how it was so funny that he pushed his brother in front of a car when he was a kid and got him run over. Another 10 minutes about how they used to beat the groom up and play pranks on him. I felt like taking the microphone away from him and I was only there as a guest from a really distant relative. The bride was yelling at her new husband that it was time to go before they left and was riding around in a golf cart trying to hurt him and her kids. Super pissed off the whole night. Don't worry though, she was pissed off already before the brother got up for the speech. Not sure why. This was also her fourth wedding in as many years. The groom had a crippled hand. Didn't ask about it and the people I went with didn't know about it. Not sure if it was a birth thing, or getting pushing in front of the car, getting put into the dryer, and having the dryer turned on, getting thrown out of a second story window, or what else have you. Found out that the groom, of all people. I thought the wife would have been the one to do it, beat the shit out of her 6 months into the marriage. Divorced. Nice wine country wedding, though. Totally would enjoy going back there. 
Catering kind of sucks as they ran out of food 5 sevenths would do again. Was a disaster from the start, although the most extravagant wedding I have ever attended. Well over 100k. Cocktails before the reception and the groom is smashed. One of the bride's best friends from out of town complimented him on how great his eyebrows looked, and he replies back with WTF are you trying to say about me? Then he tries to kick her out, even though she was just being polite. After that fiasco, he keeps drinking, and it was time for cutting the cake. So normally you just cut the cake and maybe rub a little into each other's faces. Nope, he baseball pitched the cake straight into her face. I'm not exaggerating, everyone went completely silent. The bride runs out of the reception bawling her eyes out, and her father follows. Her brothers start to get in his face, but it was quickly calmed down. Once she returns the groom decides it's time to make an apology over the mic. You can guess how much of a disaster this turned out to be. Incoherent nonsense. As the night is ending, the groom is outside with her brothers and dad trying to fight all of them. Yup, the marriage was annulled the very next day. I got two. First, groom abandoned bride at reception to drive off and collect his kids from his ex and take them somewhere. Was gone for hours. Bride, friend of ours, ended up sitting in a circle of old friends getting hammered with us, putting on a brave face. Marriage lasted three years. Second, second marriage for both. Guests were mostly her friends. In the weeks leading up to the ceremony bride moaned frequently about how my life will be over soon. I have 34 days of freedom left, etc. Like Martha Stewart counting down the days until she had to report to prison. Groom seemed adrift and lonely at his own wedding, hopped from table to table during pre-ceremony cocktails assuring her friends that we all had carte blanche to continue talking to her after they were married, as if she were a lawnmower we were free to borrow. Bride segregated wedding guests, mostly her own friends, into an A-tier invited for the ceremony and sit-down dinner, and a B-tier invited three hours later for dessert and dancing only. Bride took more pleasure in categorizing her friends than in the groom's presence, informing us A-tier guests during dinner that we were the cream of the crop. B-tier guests, including groom's few friends, showed up before dinner was over and stood out in the drizzle hammering on the windows while we finished our salmon. Groom seemed to disappear at that point and bride ended up drunk on the dance floor, doing the electric slide by herself, sloshing chardonnay everywhere. Divorced in two years. Addendum. Her big post-marital complaint about him was that after she cut him off sexually, forcing him into the guest room, he sought out internet porn featuring women who looked like her so he could masturbate to someone similar. In her view this was pathetic and unjust. My niece was 27. Top tier lawyer. Beautiful woman. Marrying a thrice divorced 42 y slash o who has somewhat mysterious means of support. He was a very attractive man seemed aloof, and her parents were gritting their teeth. They didn't like the guy. We flew in the day before the wedding, and after the rehearsal party I had a few minutes alone with my niece. I have always been her favorite aunt. All I did was ask her, are you sure you want to marry this man? The floodgates of emotions erupted. She started bawling. She wasn't sure. She didn't know what to do. She hugged me sobbing. I calmed her down. Got a glass of wine in her, and she told me that about a week ago she had an epiphany, she realized this guy was not right. But now she was afraid to back out with all of the money, travel, planning. Long story short, we had a midnight meeting with her parents and she called off the wedding. Yes, it was very difficult, the groom's family went ballistic. Thousands had already been spent by the guests and my sister, but all of the people close to her were relieved. Instead of a wedding reception, we had a family reunion with all the food and stuff. Niece married a nice guy a few years later in a civil ceremony, has three kids with him, a good marriage. God I wish I'd done this. I married a man I knew, didn't really love me, and had been abusive to me in the past, because I just didn't feel like starting over again, and he knew the only way I'd take him back is if he knocked me up and married me. No, it wasn't wise. None of it was wise. It was all stupid, I accept that. 
I'd spent almost my entire twenties with the guy, I was past 30 and desperate to get married and have a baby, and he was willing. Our wedding was an absolute disaster every step of the way, but I grinned through it. Our photographer showed up late and was not professional, the picture stunk, my sister slash bridesmaid is a compulsive liar got drunk and told a bunch of people I molested her as a child, my father didn't get used the non-refundable ticket I had bought him because it was more important to be drunk, the flowers were the wrong color, my aficionado slash best friend got shit faced, forgot the vows, forgot the rings and told us to make out in front of our entire families. Meanwhile, we did everything as cheap and quick as possible. I specifically asked to not say vows to avoid my soon to be husband saying anything embarrassing and I didn't want to spend any money because I knew deep down he didn't want to do it at all. So I compromised on everything. It sucked but I grinned through it all. All in all, it was still a good time. However, just before I went down the aisle, I was backstage and my niece was sitting with me and asked if I was nervous. That's when it hit me what a mistake I was making. This wasn't my wedding, this was someone else's wedding that I was playing the bride in. This man didn't actually want to marry me, he just thought he had to, more or less, because I convinced him it was the only way to keep me, and he didn't even really want to keep me that much he just didn't want to seem like a shithead who promised to give me a baby and marry me, but only hold up one end of that deal. About a year and shit completely dissolved. I mean, I could go on and on about all the fucked up shit, but we are talking deeply deeply fucked up shit. So much resentment on both sides. Our toddler and I now live in the unfinished basement of the home we bought that my mother rents from us because living with him became too volatile a situation. I should've just not gone down the aisle. I should've just pounded a bottle of wine, grabbed my toddler, and run for my fucking life. But, at the time, I didn't see how that would make anything better. But, holy shit, it would've been better. Two years later, we are getting a divorce and I cold saved the last four years of my life had I just moved the fuck on. A friend of mine got married to a girl he'd met on a Christian dating site after knowing her for only a month. She also lived 200 miles from him, so they really hadn't gotten to know each other. My friend has been a church goer all his life, but he's not a crazy evangelist or anything. It's just a nice, boring Presbyterian church. Anyway, the wedding was at the bride's church. I can't remember the name, but it was a small, country church out in the Midwestern cornfields. In the church, we sat as usual, friends of the bride on one side of the aisle, friends of the groom on the other. The ceremony began and all went well for a time, until, during the minister's prayer, the bride became overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. She closed her eyes, raised her hands in the air, and began speaking in tongues. This caused most of the people on the bride's side of the aisle to become similarly taken with the spirit, and they began standing and waving their arms and speaking in tongues. So you had one side of the church and the bride standing up, waving their arms and shouting hubbalabula mabula babula wabula bubbly while the other side was full of slightly uncomfortable protestants sitting there with frozen smiles, unsure what to do. Yeah. Um, that old holy spirit is, uh, great. Sure thing. You go, girl. Looking at each other out of the corners of their eyes, wondering if it was rude not to attempt to participate. Also, my friend, the groom, was similarly unsure of how to respond to his new bride, standing there in her wedding dress, waving her arms, and shouting in his face. Remember, he'd only known her for a few weeks, and they'd had only a few dates, since it was such a long drive. He waited out the storm politely, and after a few long minutes things settled down, and the ceremony continued. I talked with him at the reception and he mentioned being surprised at the speaking in tongues from his new wife. I knew she was religious, but I didn't know she was that kind of religious. I didn't say anything, but all I could think was, this is why you don't get married to someone you met on the internet after only a month, dipshit. It's been a year, and they are still married. Happily, I guess. I see him on Facebook occasionally, and they look happy. I don't know if she's got him speaking in tongues now. I wouldn't know how to ask. 
all of her Snapchats and social media posted photos in the final weeks leading up to the wedding were of her running around doing every last errand, staying up until 2am finishing decorations, making all the final phone calls, and organizing shit while he watched sports. Then on the weekend of, she was running around setting up everything while he got shit faced with his groomsmen in the hotel for the entire day before the wedding. It was a destination wedding so everyone was there a day early. He was so hungover that he almost missed the wedding. His vows were a single sentence and hers were uncomfortably intense and long winded about how she loved him more than life itself and he has her whole soul now. She had prepared thoughtful surprise after surprise for him during the reception, which again was uncomfortably overkill, while he wouldn't even help her set up his own wedding. Also the juxtaposition of the speeches. Her friends and family all talked about how great a wife and mother she was, and how special it was to finally see them become an official family, they already had kids, and all of the speeches about him were about how he was such a great party bro, and how he should maybe stop putting so much up his nose now, but we'll definitely keep drinking as hard as ever. Then the next day, when they had to start cleaning, taking things down, and packing up, again she was running around doing everything while he was sitting around visiting with his guests and groomsmen and going on about how it was his fucking day, the hotel should do everything for him because he just got married. Even though he didn't hire anyone to help take down everything, he's fucking broke, so he wanted the cheapest package where they just rented the room and needed to set up, take down, and clean it themselves to prevent getting charged more fees they couldn't afford. So like always she did everything, because now she was officially married to this man-child. Holy shit this turned into a long rant. I'm sorry, I guess I just feel really bad for my friend, the bride, and I've had this pent up for a while. The groom flinched every time she moved her arms near him. It was painful to watch. They are still married, and he no longer speaks with any of us. Edit, I got a hold of his brother, and he told me that the family fought to get him out of it. Back in April they forced him to put in divorce paperwork. They told me to call him at 6pm tonight to talk to him. He's been pretty depressed, and they think this might help. Apparently everyone was pushed away, I thought it was just me. Edit 2, just got off the phone with him after a really awesome 3 hour conversation. For his privacy, I'm not going to put many details, but he is fine. He told his sister about what was going on, she got the family involved, and did what families do, we did a lot of catching up, and I feel so happy that someone else was able to do what I didn't know how to do. Thank you all for your assistance in this, he has seen this post, and is grateful that people care. We made plans to meet up next month. I think the first thing I notice is how much of a couple they are. Like this is our crazy day versus this is my perfect day and whatever. Like when things go wrong and they both honestly laugh, you know it's a strong foundation already. But if things go wrong and one is upset and the other is trying to fix it or worse, ignores her. I give it 2 years. 5. Tops. Because people know my alias and I officiate weddings part time. I don't want to point anyone out recently. So I'll mention my wedding in 1989. We were young, 20 over 18. From a long distance relationship, she was the popular girl from a small town. I was the nerd from the big city. No one wanted to help out so we planned and financed most of the wedding ourselves. We overheard relatives say, I'll give it 2 years. We were happily married for 25 years before she passed away in 2014. Our marriage outlived most of those relatives. And the key was we worked together on things. Hell, we ran a large anim convention for part of that time. We were a team, and we were partners. Foxhole buddies. Us vs the world. That's what you need to look for at a wedding. While celebrating their engagement with everyone, the groom got drunk and started talking all possessive about his bride. Like this is how you keep a woman. When you meet a woman like her you gotta lock it down fast with a ring. Like it's a cage or something. Pretty obvious red flag, but she was determined. They were my neighbors, woke up to what sounded like him trying to de-escalate the situation with a slap to her face. 
sounded like she would respond by throwing every piece of furniture she could lift at him to help her properly enunciate her rebuttal during these insane fights. In terms of intimidation during a fight it sounded like she won. The marriage lasted 3 months. Because apparently every time she left to go somewhere he'd assume she's cheating. So he'd go out and cheat constantly regardless of whether or not she actually was. So they tried saving the marriage by staying in together in their tiny studio apartment for a month with nothing but their hate and complete lack of trust between the two of them for company before throwing in the towel. The marriage counseling wasn't enough make a dent at that point. Last summer my then fiancé and I went to his cousin's wedding. The groom, cousin, was very happy, positively beaming during the ceremony. The bride marched her wedding party up the aisle with a sour look. It was bizarre. After the ceremony the bride was micromanaging the photos, the welcome drinks, the catering, and when the speeches ended, before the food, she stood up and said she wouldn't be a traditional woman she wanted to do a speech. She didn't have a speech. Whatever she said was not memorable. She ran to the buffet, then drank heavily with her bridesmaids. After food she and her husband walked around to talk to all the guests. She was determined to get around everyone, whereas he wanted to linger and chat. So she literally dragged him around after a hi, how are you, nice to see you, bye. As the music started she was with the bridesmaids watching the empty dance floor. He was at the bar with the groomsmen. He wasn't smiling anymore. They attended our wedding in the summer. She still looks like she's got a bad smell under her nose and he looks defeated. They aren't even 30. It's very sad. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.